So the Xbox One X has been released and it is a console that's being touted as kicking the PC in terms of price and performance. And before we get on with this video, I will say one thing and it's like a disclaimer and that is, I will agree that it will be extremely difficult to build a PC, especially a new PC, that will beat the Xbox One in terms of price and performance, especially with the current prices of DDR4 RAM being so high at the moment, and also with that, graphics cards being sold out due to cryptocurrency mining boom. And with that, this has generally caused graphics cards to be priced even above their retail pricing. Though although we can't build a new PC that beats the price performance of the Xbox One X, how about a used PC, which is a big focus of the channel here at Tech yes City? Well, this PC beside me does come in a lot cheaper, so let's find out if it can beat it. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, this is Brian coming to you guys today with the PC of the month. Usually every month around the channel, I build a used PC that gives really good price performance. And today's PC is kind of in the middle, it's not the best price performance I've built, but it's certainly one powerful PC, with the center of this PC having a GTX 780 Ti. Now this is a graphics card that's a few years old, but was very powerful back in the day. It was also extremely power hungry, to the point where this thing was burning 550 watts from the wall. And this thing isn't even overclocked. I haven't even overclocked it. I'm just using the out of factory settings, although it is the Hall of Fame. So it is really aggressively clocked out of the box. Now for the CPU, we are using a Xeon X3450. You can get these off AliExpress for around $40 Australian and even cheaper in USD. So around about 33 US dollars shipped to your door. Four cores, eight threads can be overclocked even with a budget motherboard like today, the H55 motherboard, which we picked up in a whole deal for a hundred Australian dollars, came with a hard drive case and a power supply. Though although the case and the power supply are mediocre, we have to replace the power supply with something stronger. So we've got here an Antec 620 watt continual power, high current gamer power supply, which will feed that 780 Ti all the juice it needs, especially when it's under a gaming load. There was for some other parts with this build, it came with 4GB of DDR3 memory in that price, although I decided to replace it completely with 8GB kit of overclockable DDR3 memory. And this came in at around about 40 Australian dollars. And as for the cooler, we actually got a brand new cooler. This is the Antec A40 Pro, and we got this for 29 Australian dollars. And although it's very small, it did do a really good job of taking this CPU up to four gigahertz. And even under stress, it stayed under 90 degrees. And keep in mind, this is in summer too. So things can only get better throughout the rest of the year. And this leaves the whole total of this build to 326 US dollars, or if you're in Australia, 422 Australian dollars. Now, if you wanna add a Windows 10 Pro key, you can go on eBay, pick these up for five bucks, and you can install Windows legit have no problems at all. So if you wanna add that to the total, an extra $5 Australian will get you sorted. Now comparing this to the price of the Xbox One X, it's about two thirds of the price. However, you don't get any warranties, it's generally used parts. And you compare that to the Xbox One X's 500 USD or 650 Australian dollars with brand new warranty, it does make the Xbox One X a pretty compelling option. However, with that aside, when we take a look at the Xbox One X, what actually makes it tick? It has an extremely updated graphics portion on the system, which makes it comparable to a PC graphics card like the RX 580. The RX 580 does have less stream processors, however, it is clocked a little bit higher. So in the real world, the PC version, the RX 580, and the Xbox One X's custom AMD graphics solution would be performing roughly the same. However, keep in mind there is one key difference, and that is the bus width on the actual memory itself. It is 50% larger on the One X as opposed to the PC. Though keep in mind that the CPU still has to share that extra big frame buffer of 12 gigabytes versus the eight gigabytes on the RX 580, which is dedicated to the graphics card itself. However, with that in mind, two weak points that I believe with the Xbox One X is its CPU itself. It's still using the same CPU that the PS4 original and the Xbox One original released three years ago are using to date. It's only 30% more faster. And also the ROPs on the graphics card itself allow its 4K performance to be a little bit capped in my opinion. So with this console, it is kind of stuck in a little bit of a high place. Sure, there will be some awesome customized games for the Xbox One X, but on the other fence, there will be some games that come out that won't play that well on the Xbox One X as well, especially compared to the original consoles. You won't get that much of a boost because of the CPU and also because of that GPU having limited drops at 4K. Anyway, onto the most important part of the video, the performance numbers. Let's take a look at this PC first. 
When we went to Overwatch, we had 1080p Ultra. We're getting around 90 FPS, and this was against 11 Roadhogs on the screen, me being a Bastion just mowing things down. Now, when I step this up to 4K medium settings, I was getting 90 FPS. We move over to a game like Fallout 4, which is meant to have an enhanced experience, 4K 30 FPS on the Xbox One X. We're seeing here with the PC, we can get 60 FPS at 1080p, high settings, and when we step that up to 4K, we're getting around 45 FPS on low. So it was performing a little bit better than the Xbox One X, though I'm not sure on the graphical settings of Fallout 4 on the One X. Moving over to Destiny 2, the highest settings at 1080p on this PC, we're getting 90 FPS constant, practically no dips at all. Stepping it up to 4K, low settings, 60 FPS, we were still getting a really good experience. Now moving over to Rise of the Tomb Raider, which is another enhanced in game on the Xbox One X. 4K, 51 FPS on the lowest settings at 4K. And then taking a Captain Squizzo at Call of Duty World War II, which is actually a poster child game for the Xbox One X. It does run at 4K and it does run at 60 FPS. When we stepped up this PC beside me here on the lowest settings at 4K, we were getting around about 60 FPS as well. It was very smooth and there was no real stuttering at all. Stepping it on to 1080p with a very high and extra setting detail, we're getting around 100 to 120 FPS. And of course, there was no stuttering on this PC as well. So as I was talking about before with the One X and its CPU and its GPU configuration, it's kind of in an odd place for new games that come out pretty quickly. And of course, this day and age being the age of a quick buck and bang jobs, it's no surprise to see a game like PUBG, which was released quite quickly. However, with that is a very exciting and fun game to play being quite unoptimized. And it's games like these that hit the Xbox One and they just run really bad. You're getting around 30 FPS a lot of the times, 60 FPS will pretty much be out of the picture due to the limitations of the CPU. So you're practically forced to go to 4K. However, since this game is so graphically intensive, those drops are gonna be a limiting factor even at 4K on the Xbox One X. This PC beside me here did perform really well at 1080p, it was a great experience. However, when we did step it up to 4K, it was a very tough time for this PC, one that I wouldn't play on personally. So really when it came down to it, there were a few victories for the Xbox One X. And of course there were a few victories for this PC beside me. It just depends on your playing experience. Personally, I love high refresh rates and that's something PC enables me to do, especially with very powerful CPUs. Even on a budget and on a used PC like this, you can get really good performance. Though with the graphics cards, you can pick up something used in the used PC price market, I've got a lot of guides and every month I do use PC parts hunting. You guys can see how I hunt every month for the good deals, what graphics cards I look for. I'll put some links in the description below. But with that said, this PC of the month here is very good. I'm proud of it. It is a nice PC. Though taking a look at this PC, it does use up a lot of power. And with that, I have to leave the side panel off. And also the 780 Ti Hall of Fame, I actually thought this would run a lot better than it did. The cooler was a little bit of a letdown in my opinion. It wasn't able to keep this graphics card under control. The 780Ti does use up a lot of power and with that it does need a bigger cooler. I may even put an Arctic Accelero on there just to see if I can drop those temperatures and get the clocks even higher. As it was thermal throttling I believe and it's something that I'm not proud of. You won't want this to run at these temperatures all day every day especially if you're a hardcore gamer. Another thing as well I would like to replace the hard drive maybe with a one terabyte or even put in an SSD to accompany that 500 gigabyte hard drive. But as it stands, the Xbox One X, great console. It's one of the consoles that I can say is actually very good in terms of its specs and its hardware. As opposed to the PS4 and the Xbox One, when they were first released, they were having a tough time doing even 1080p 30 FPS. So it is a great addition to the console market with the Xbox One X. It's something that I may even consider purchasing as opposed to the PS4, which I purchased when that was first released and I played it for about 15 minutes and immediately sold it afterwards. Anyway guys, that's about it for me today. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comment section below what you think of this PC here beside me and also what you think of the Xbox One X. Do you think it is a contender to the PC? Personally, I do think it is coming in at a good price to performance, especially in this day and age of high DDR4 RAM prices and also the cryptocurrency mining boom. However, I much prefer PC. I always have and always will. And with that, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.
Come <laughs> on. 